How are you now? Broadcasting from the studios of Sydney in, where are we? Camaragal country. It's the Theory of Thing Investment Podcast, Season 8, Episode 11. Remember, if it's talked about enough, it's a thing. This show is brought to you by the Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. Go to amfix.com for access to over 3,000 mutual funds anywhere around the world. Um, it's a really good website. Go and check it out today. Get a login uh, and help keep this podcast going. Thank you for your help. I remind all the pod, all the all the advice contained in this podcast is general in nature. Please speak to an advisor about your needs. Speaking of which, that is me. I am James Whelan, investment manager at VFS Group. I'm a white male, aged 42. I'm wearing sneakers from Nike. Uh, Nike reported this morning. I'm wearing beige golf pants and a blue ping golf sweater, as if I, maybe some stage later on I'm going to be playing golf because it's the end of the financial year. Um, I'm also joined by another advisor over at HLM Investments, Heath Moss. Heath, how are you now? What are you wearing? Uh, good morning, mate. Uh, just I'm, I'm, you know, following on from last week's episode, I'm all gazmanned up. I've got, <laughs> got a gazman polo on. I've got gazman shorts on because the the heaters are on in the house and it's like a sauna, so I get hot. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're really yeah. we're really getting for that sponsorship, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We are. And, and, and <laughs> if you're out there, Mister Gazman, hit us up. I think it's Doctor Gazman. I think that's it. Oh, it's is an it Australian ever... company, at least. So um... hey, is that really? Okay, yeah, I feel yeah, good. I feel I've... good with that. Yeah, I looked a long time ago when I first started shopping there, and yeah, it was. Um, I thought it was an Australian economy, uh, okay. company. So okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Ethically, ethically sourced materials, I think as well. I don't know, I just made that yep. up. Um, this uh, this episode is being recorded in Sydney. It is the thirtieth of June, twenty twenty three. Uh, it's ten thirty seven in Milson's Point, Australian Eastern Standard Time. It's freezing outside. Welcome to winter. Yeah, um, we're very we've gone past the shortest day of the year. Now there's a few little bits and pieces just to go over to begin with. Oh, coming up in the show, Heath, you've got the agenda. I don't. I'm sorry, I've been slack. What is it? Yep. What have we got coming up? It's Look, going to be quick. We chat about uh, some strength in the U.S. economy. Yeah. Um, Maybe a little bit similar in, in the Australian economy as well. Yeah. And uh, a little bit of a chat on the um, advanced chip semiconductors and, and the potential expansion of bands uh, across that uh, sector as well. Excellent. No worries at all. Now, a few things that we didn't get onto just on the housekeeping side of things, which is great. Remember a few weeks ago I said I was going to be competing in the nationals for jump rope? Yep. Um, in the plus 40 category. Well, I'm proud to, I've, I've had it here to say that I was going to do something. I, I'm pleased that with the six weeks of training that I did, I managed to win both of my events. I'm now Congratulations. A, dual, a dual gold medalist, gold medalist, a long gold. Fantastic. And really to take, if I can get one more qualification, uh, one more win, I can qualify for potentially to go to Japan in 2025. That, that will be sensational. In Kawasaki, um, which is going to be great. Anyway, I did that. I'm proud. Thank you, everyone, for the support that you gave me. Going into that, um, it really does. It really does help. Now, the second one. Now, I don't know if you know about this, but I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna bring it up here because a, a friend of mine is organising a a breast cancer charity dinner. It's in a Colburn, and I've got to talk about it. It's a. It's this wine cu- wine country glamping thing that she's mm-hmm. built and is building, and it is fantastic up there. And it's they do an annual fundraiser. So this is the second year that they've done it. Last year was a, was a, was a decent start. This one is going to be bigger. Saturday, the twenty eighth of October, twenty twenty three. Get a ticket. I think they're about two hundred bucks each. Um, early bird tickets finish probably in a few hours of you listening to this podcast by the time it gets out. Um, so get in right now if you can. Two hundred bucks a pop. Get up to Pocolbin and. Um, have a great night. I'm going to be there. Bell's on. It's going to be a sensational night, and you get to help out a really good cause working with uh, the McGrath Foundation. So, which fantastic is, cause. Yeah, yeah, it's a fantastic cause. So, yeah, she, mm. she's really good. We've um, we've shifted or uh, most. I was going to say probably about half the tickets. So it's pretty good for four months out, and mm. we just want to get the rest of it. So, Pakalwa in a real destination place, top of the top of the wine country, over in the Hunter Valley. Um, really keen to get out there. Anyway, that's that. Um, so if you want any more, check out Beltree, B-E-L-T-R-E-E, um, and the annual event. It's on their website. You can get tickets through that any way that you like, or just send me a message and I'll be able to help you out, get this thing done. I love these sorts of worthy causes, and I love it, um, That just the, the heart and soul that she's putting into this thing. It's fantastic. And hello if you're listening out there too. Um, big support, a big fan. Now, Heath, I yes. wrote a note at the beginning, of the, uh, beginning of the week saying that I thought that maybe some there was some – Mixed messages coming out on the back of my we're in, already in a recession stage. Um, mm-hmm. Interesting that the ANZ, the same people who talked about how bad credit card spending was going down 20% year on year for consumer discretionary, also 
the head of the economics team over at the ANZ saying that, uh, well, you know, households are actually robust and they've still got lots of savings. It's sort of similar, similar to what you said. It's just like one yeah. of these things has got to be wrong. Yeah, maybe, and, maybe, and I, I, I equipped, equipped, you know, I equipped that credit, maybe credit card spending is down 20% year on year because everyone's credit card is maxed out, like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, good reason you're adding another level to your house. So. Yes, I know. Um, yeah, can't put that on the Amex. No, um, no. But, uh, yeah, it, it squeezes everything else. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think it all comes out. We saw uh, retail figures come out this week in Oz and for May, and they were quite a bit stronger than expected, up 0.7% versus the 0.1% um, everyone was expecting. Mm. And and guess what was the driver? Well, the driver was eating out. Cafes, restaurants were the big driver. They were up 1.4% for the month. So people are still out, going out there. Uh, having their dinners and while they're at dinner complaining about how much everything costs. Restaurants so, full of people complaining about the economy of Philip Lowe. Philip, yeah. Philip Lowe can't he, – he, he's not going to be able to eat out. No, no. No, it's cardboard and sauce for Philip Lowe. So, um, like he's going to get bread rolls. Through. I was just thinking for his personal safety. <laughs> oh, okay. And people, people, people were stuffing their, stuffing, their, stuffing their face full of, you know, a, 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 a nice basket press. I had yeah. to think. I had to think of the, the the first South Australian wine that I could think of. You know, not a nice, nice quality basket yeah. press. You know, mouthful of mouthful of very expensive pasta. Yelling at Phil Lowe about how bad mortgage rates are. I know, I know. Yeah, and, one or the and, other. I know. <laughs> you, if you, you can't uh, you can't sit there and complain about high prices when you keep on paying those higher prices. So why is, is why were card numbers break. down? Why were card numbers down then? Hey, answer the I, question. I, 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 I can't answer that. That question, I think, yeah, maybe because pri- um, prices are actually starting to come down, so therefore we are paying as much. We saw during the week uh, monthly CPI came in very soft. Headline came in um, at 5.6 versus the 6.1 Yeah, it wasn't expected. a relief. relief. Um, Trim mean was still decent at 6.1, but that was down point from 6.7, um, so that's still coming down. Yeah. And so the market, of the actual uh, the 200 rallied, Really strongly on the back of that, on I think it was Wednesday. Um, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. It just yeah, absolutely it did. cranked. And the Aussie dollar came off too, which yep. really and helped. It, I went unhedged on Monday. And, and I think I think chance of a rate hike on Wednesday was around 30% in July. And then we got the retail figures out yesterday, plus uh, skilled job vacancies, which only fell 2%. Um, we're still 89% above pre-COVID levels in terms of job vacancies. Mm. Um, so, and retail figures were actually 20% ahead of pre-COVID figures as well. So um, there is still, uh, oh, and so just to cap that, the, the job, uh, the uh, chance of a rate hike in July now is at 44%. So basically a 50-50 coin flip now. Um, so mm. we, we are getting those mixed messages. And we've, we've been seeing that for six months in the US where it's been really a rule. A set of mixed messages over there as well in terms of, you know, parts of the economy are really, really soft and coming in, whereas other parts like the consumer remain robust and, and okay. And we're seeing similar things here. And but like I said last week, I mean, we, we've got $270 billion worth uh, of uh, savings built up from the COVID period still that aren't really being drawn down. So households, you know, we're still fully employed. With wages are still going up decently. Um, it's you know household households are okay. There are there are obviously sections that are really hurting, and we really do sympathise with them. But overall, um, we are still okay. Um, so yeah, well, I mean, mate, as they say, just be be aware of averages overall. I like this one. I, I explained it to the to the girls the other the other week. It was like if you put one hand in the oven and one hand in the freezer, then on average you're okay. <laughs> no, you're not. No, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> No, uh, uh, yeah, I get that. And if the 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 ask were to fall out of the 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 bottom end, then I think things would really really start hurting. But yeah. like I said, well, I think that households overall um, are strong enough to withstand a, a slowdown and not enter a recession here in Australia. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it. Okay, and the US, US, uh, very much the same. We saw yields fly last night. Um, the uh, 10 years were, uh, what, they were up 13 basis points and the two years were up 15 basis points. The two years are, are knocking on the door of uh, their, their recent highs of around 5%. They're at 4.86% yeah. now. 
Um, and that was on the back of jobless claims coming in a lot uh, softer than expected. So you had both initial and continuing, um, both softer than expected. And it's and it's important to distinguish the difference between those. The initial claims refer to people that are looking to make a claim, maybe download the application, et cetera, et cetera. Continuing are people who actually have submitted, been approved, and getting some sort of benefit. So um, those continuing claims are the ones I generally pay close attention to, and they came off um, and were off substantially. So um, there's a bit of strength there. And also then you had durable goods earlier in the week, which were, were stronger than expected, and new home sales were also stronger than expected during the week. So they're, like I said, again, even with mortgage rates, the 30-year mortgage rate at 7% US, people are still looking to buy homes. Yeah. Um, what, what else are you going to do? The, yeah, true. What's amazing to me is that after all this time that you've got, imagine if cracking absolutely amazing news like that came out last year. What would have happened to the market? The market would have dumped two or three percent easily. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would have been. No, we cannot yeah. accept any good news this week. It just, it's just not the year for good news. And now, it just sometimes it just happens, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah. the market actually it seems to be acting rationally. It's something that yeah. I jokingly put on the chat that we that we share. I mean, the market hasn't been normal since two thousand and seven. So no. No, Maybe. and and funnily, you mentioned two thousand and seven, or during two thousand and seven, well, from oh three to oh seven, we had a period of rates rising quite aggressively. Uh, I think the cash rate got to about six and a half, seven percent here in Australia. Um, but we also had markets do extremely well. We had a, a few years, two or three years, where the S and P did twenty percent plus. Earnings went up. Um, and it all sort of was that Goldilocks scenario. And obviously we know how that all ended because of excess credit in the system. <laughs> and maybe that's what we're leading up to again this time. Maybe okay. we've got a few years of Goldilocks scenario where, you know, finally, though, you know, we've had a bit of a earnings recession in the US um, and mm. that's expected to last another quarter. Maybe after that we start to see earnings lift again. Um, the economy re- remains resilient um, my only concern is the, the the multiple expansion that's already happened. I mean, US uh, forward earnings is around close to nineteen times now, which um, with a cash rate of around five percent, I'm not very comfortable with it at all. Okay. Um, okay. It doesn't sit well with me. Um, yeah, there is just something that's there. I mean, Mike Wilson keeps on banging on saying that we haven't seen the the last of the earnings recession yet in the states. No, um, that's um, Mike Wilson, head of uh, what head of global equity strategy at Morgan Stanley? I don't know what. It, anyway, he's he's the top guy when it comes to the investment yep. theme uh, thematic at, at Morgan Stanley, and he thinks that it's not there. He's been extraordinarily bearish the last couple of months. Has been yep. proved incorrect. So he's, he's which is which is rare because they they have managed to pick the eyes out of this thing beautifully since COVID hit, and yeah. now he's just a little bit wrong on this stuff. So. Yep. I still think we're going to see a recession in the US. It may be, it may be just pushed out. Uh, I've got the timing wrong. I thought we'd be in one now. It clearly, the US clearly isn't a recession, isn't in a recession now. Um, but I mean, maybe later in the year, that uh, commercial real estate um, scenario still hangs over our head. Um, and the, the Fed actually um, talked about that and said it was going to monitor that quite uh, closely. Mm. So that's that's on the radar. But I mean, you know, the market has been well aware of that for some time now. So whether, you know, if things have been put in place to um, to stop catastrophe, um, I, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of headwinds. I mean, if China picks up later in the year again and the EU sort of comes out of its slump, then, you know, things could be rosy again. But I'm, I'm still leaning towards the US recession um Later um, in the year, or maybe I'm, early next year. I'm there. I'm. I'm in that direction. I'm in that direction as well, just purely based on the fact that. I mean, if you just want to be as simple as you possibly can be, the yield curve can't be that inverted without something happening. Yeah, like yeah, it's true. It's extraordinary, and you know, maybe I just haven't read it or got into it enough. If anyone has got a good note or a good reasoning by any, I don't care how crazy these people are. I'll read the craziest person you got. Okay, I might mm-hmm. need a beer or two, but okay. I want to see a note that actually explains. Or somehow explains how the yield curve can be can be where it is in the states, and for it to not signal that there's a recession ahead. My only thinking is COVID just totally stuffed a lot of data and 
a gear up, you know, stop starting an economy and, you know, the things that did with demand and supply, et cetera. Uh, my, that's my only explanation as to why we're in the scenario we're in now. Okay. Well, anyway, look, we'll move on from that. Like I said, it's going to be a quickie, mate. Now you, you want to talk about chippies? Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we had at the start of the week, uh, we had talk about uh, Biden administration maybe um, uh, expanding the ban on advanced uh, chips in the US. Now, I was reading an article uh, yesterday on it. Basically, they're saying um, uh, the Chinese companies are, are stockpiling US chips at the moment, so bringing forward demand um, on the basis that they, they expect these, these bans to come in and be tightened. Um, now, you know, it's so much so ByteDance themselves has ordered as many chips th- this year so far than the, all of China did in 2022. Just the so TikTok people. Yep, just the TikTok people. Now, China isn't a huge part of like NVIDIA's, um, uh, and I'll talk NVIDIA because NVIDIA are 84% of the GPU market. So when you're talking these sort of chips, you're really talking about NVIDIA. And and NVIDIA said last year when Biden still uh, Mm -hmm. sort of addressed these bans, which got delayed until September this year. So it sort of works out why you saw NVIDIA's revenues beat so big in Q1 and their forecast uh, revenues for Q2 were so large as well because these bans were pushed back. So Q2 and Q3 this year should still be really, really good for them. Those bans come into effect and are expanded, then Q4 could be a real rough one for NVIDIA. We're not not sure. But they said, you know, it would cost them about $400 million uh, for the year for 2023 if these bans came in. So it's not not huge. But the bring forward side of things, because at the moment the the bans, Biden, the proposed bans are um, any chip 14 nanometers or um, uh, nano, is it nanometers? Yeah, nanometers. You're talking about the wrong guy on this stuff now. Yeah. uh, uh, (laughs) Uh, uh, a ban, you're banned from exporting these chips to China. Um, okay. Now, this doesn't stop them to be being sold in China. You could still export them to, say, India, and then, you know, the third party sends them on onto China. What that does is it restricts volume um, and it pushes prices up, um, which, you know, uh, we've already seen happen in China. Mm. But wh- where they could expand it is just outright ban the sales of these chips, these AI chips, the A100 and the H uh, A100, um, because they're seven nanometers and four nanometers uh, respect- respectively. Um, so if they outright ban the sale of these chips to um, China, then that will have a material impact on Nvidia um, and their sales. So and then that could be the catalyst for a sell down. We've seen Nvidia it hit highs of around 440 a share. This week, or last week, sorry, and it's come down to about 408, so down about 7%, but still up about three and a half times from its lows in October last year. God, I can't so, believe that. I, yeah, I've got, yeah, I, so, I, was, I was going through old emails the other day. I was looking for, you know, you know when you're, you're looking for an old email in Outlook, which is the worst possible place to try and find old emails, yeah. and, and you can see stuff where I, I, I had clients in NVIDIA and, to, and, you know, good, follow that Pelosi thing she sold. We, it was just that if it just, just, what am I doing trying to get in and out on this thing? Good profit, great healthy profit. Everyone really happy with the whole thing. And then there's just the whole rest of it that happened with this yeah. AI thing they kicked off. Yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, just what I, are you doing sometimes? Anyway. I mean, I'm I'm not happy paying 400 bucks for NVIDIA here. Not buying it here, mate. No, not buying it here. I want exposure to AI. Yeah. Um, and when the time comes, I'll be buying like the Fang ETF here in Australia. Or, you know, I'd be happy buying the video around $300. Um, and that on the charts, that looks like a good place yep. where they may come down to. And if, if these bans come in um, and they're really heavy, because so the China, uh, the Biden administration are all about trying to stop China's advancement in, and self sufficiency in the advanced chip space. Because, you know, semiconductors are the new oil. That's where the war is being raged. And that's where. You know, the economies will be driven by AI and these semiconductors um, and everything they can do. So, um, yeah, I'll be looking at NVIDIA. I think around 300 on the charts is looks good to me. And, or something like a Snowflake. I think Snowflake and their services, their data services, um, will be really, really important moving forward. Um, and, and they will benefit greatly from AI and, and, and stuff they can deliver with that. So, um, but not yet, not yet. Going to sit on my hands for now. Yeah, okay, you're going to do that. Um, now, uh, bits and pieces of some local news uh, that's coming out. 
I had some other stuff that I was going to talk about and it's gone. Oh, yeah, it was just announced. I saw the announcement drop this morning that Hester has moved from Link. It's a oh, yeah, from yeah. Link to Grow. Uh, mm. Grow Super is Grow Super. I think they're just called Grow now, but Grow Super is a company very close. We're very close to this company. We actually seeded it. Okay. Uh, um, so from the day sitting down at Ryan's Bar with um, with Josh, going through the wireframes, what the original app was going to be, chipping in a bit of money, shifting most of that to someone else to sold out but still having a part ownership of the company. It's, it's, it's amazing to see a story like that where you've seeded something from start, helped go, and now they're, they're the dominant player in the administration space. That's that's a big get. A history of a massive... It's uh, about, 50, about 50 mil. We were doing back of the envelope here. And yeah. I think the last time that Grow was valued for the last little, I think they did the last little raise or so, it was about 120 mil. Yep. So you yep. think about what that now that is grow at um, there and you're going in. That's why you seed little companies like that. Mm. I'm just saying, I don't, it's just, the, just the thing on the top of my mind that, that happened, I was like, okay, that's 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 a, an astoundingly good number. That, they are changing the way the administration works. I'm thinking that probably based on that, Link is probably going to lose more clients to grow. Yeah. Um, uh, maybe maybe if you want to have a bit of short, I haven't even looked at a chart. But if you want to have a bit of a short, a short on uh, on old Linky, maybe there's uh, it's worth having once, a look. Once Link spun out their um, uh, what was it, the conveyancing software business, there wasn't at much. Texas, much. whatever it's called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there wasn't much left in Link. Um, and and uh, they got a couple of takeover offers, and I wasn't sure, you know, why. Mm. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, yeah. but I mean, they, I mean, they're dominant. They're dominant in the super fun sector. So I mean, whilst they lose Hester, I mean, they still are quite dominant. But yeah, I'm I'm with you on that one. I, Link hasn't been a stock I've looked at for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But yeah. Also, I'll just 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 remembered something. Also, I had something in my notes. Another good indication of the Australian economy and the consumer. Here we go. Bit of, bit of, bit of Tay Tay, bit of Taylor Smith. Oh, God. And what she has done this week. I love We're going to sell, we're going to sell 500,000 seats, bums on seats to her concerts in February next year. Yeah. And, and there was demand. There was, you know, two, three times that demand for her. You've said so, bid to cover, bid to cover. <laughs> yeah, that, I'm calling it, calling it swiftflation. If if we can afford to spend, I think it was like you're going to talk yourself into decent. a circle. You are going to talk yourself into a circle <laughs> with this thing that you're doing, and the end the end is just like Phil Lowe comes around and slaps you in the face. Go on. I know. If we can spend, I think anything for any decent seat, it was over three hundred dollars for a seat. Yeah, anything like, and that was still in the stands at the MCG or ANZ Stadium. Yeah. If you wanted the floor seats, I think they were five six hundred dollars, yeah. something like that. Yeah. If we can still afford to fork that out for Tay Tay, then I think the Australian consumer is doing okay. The Australian so, consumer is doing okay at a time when they yeah. probably should. Well, and I what, don't, I don't what, know what to say about this. But what I, will it do for inflation in February next year when she's here? And I've already seen the prices of those hotels and flights and stuff like that. The the inflation for that, we're going to have to wipe that that bit of data out of the uh, uh, the series because it's going to it's going to cause a huge spike because. Some of the prices that have been quoted now for a hotel room or Airbnb and that are just just ridiculous over in Melbourne and Sydney. Wait. So yeah, thanks Tay Tay, you're just uh, adding to the consumers' pain here. <laughs> I couldn't believe. It. I was listening to. I was dropping the kids at school the other day, and this is after the Amex website crash, and everyone managed to get yep. tickets and all this sort of stuff happened with the pre-sales. And I was listening to. I hate breakfast radio, um, but I was listening to Small Z on ninety six point nine Nova, um, and this is me used to do community radio, and I can't stand listening to it. Um, anyone who wants to know about my previous times with Blacktown, Fairfield and Holroyd Community Radio, SWR 99.9, you're joining James and Caroline. We're the goods, taking on drive time, 4 p.m. on a Friday. Anyway, that um, that was us. The uh, Listening to Smallsy on Nova 969, to, getting people to call in. Hey, t- t- you got your Taylor Swift? Yeah, I spent $9,000. I know. So I'm sitting there just going, we're going to go. It's another 100 basis points, mate. It's another 100 <laughs> basis points. Another- we're not going to get out of this one alive, mate. And we then, need the Swift indicator or something uh, like that. God, uh, there was a girl on TikTok who was talking about it's just stop talking. You know, you just want to shove a bread roll in someone's mouth to just stop talking. Yep. Um, yep. And she was just like, Taylor Swift is going to get us out of this. Spending is just like sort of what you said, but just like just super bullish for this. It's just like you don't understand how bad that is. The signals that that the signals that the bad guys are looking at are yeah. the signals that you're showing. And if, if they're saying that spending is still going to be there, that they're not going to hesitate to continue to raise rates. Everyone just 
Just play it cool, you know. It's cool like when the, when the boss is coming. You just, just don't work too hard, you know. Check on your Spotify. You can listen to Tay Tay at home. I'll tell you what. I, I, I so wish that I could take the girl. They're, they're not huge Tay Tay fans, but I mean, it's it's one of the rare opportunities you can go. Anyway, um, football. We said it was going to be a short one. What do you got? Yep. What's your tip? Hit me. You had a win last uh, week. Yeah. I had a win last week. No, 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 no. I'm, I missed out again. My crows were, were, were better than expected. At halftime, they were down by about five goals, and I was looking good on my bet. And we came roaring back and even got the lead, but I still lost by two points. And I think the line for us was uh, I wanted Collingwood out the line, which was 18 and a half points. So I lost that one. But this week, no, I'm back in the pie. Oh, I'm back in the the pies in at the line versus Gold Coast, up in the Gold Coast. The line's only six and a half points. Yeah, it's not I huge, is the, it? No, no. I think the pies will win by, you know, three to five goals up there. Even yeah. though Gold Coast are decent up there, yeah. I still think the, the pies are just, yeah. I, I can't see Gold Coast taking them down. So um, that's that's my bet. It's about a one dollar ninety, and I think the line's six and a half points. So right. uh, pies pies at the line. All right, I've got one now. I've I've had win after win after win. I got an absolute cracker last week. I can't remember what it was, but it was it was a massive outsider, and I had a with the start and ended up getting away with the win. So I was actually an underbidder on mm-hmm. that one. Me, good, good old conservative Jimmy here. Invest today. Uh, I think the Titans will be down at the Raiders, and I I reckon, you know what, if you want to go Titans with the start, I think they're given about three and a half, whatever that is. That mm-hmm. sounds like a weird number, go nuts on that sort of area. I think there's a really good chance that they'll just get away and just, and just steal the whole meat pie. So yeah. um, I think the Titans are away. They're not backing, and the Raiders have got one or two players missing. Papa Leaguey, done a hammy. Um, I like that there's a guy who plays league, and his name is Papa Leaguey. <laughs> it's, like it's a bit like the guy who plays who played for Collingwood. With the black, they got the black and white vertical stripes, and his name is Barcode. Barcode? Don't you mean Varco? Close enough. <laughs> it was Varco, not Barcode. Bar- his name was Barcode. Was, Barco. was like, they say, they'd say the Bruce McAvoy would say Barcode, and I was just like, because <laughs> they're black and white stripes. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, good, oh, just good. So Papa Leaky's out. Papa Leaky, I like it. <laughs> Papa Leaky. Um, anyway, not as good. The two of us on MasterChef, I know his name is actually two of us on MasterChef, and you shouldn't make fun of people's names, but I do. I, every time I say that, it's um, the girls just love it. Um, anyway, so he's also a good player too, and I really like watching him. Like, uh, now, I think we're done. Yep. No more bits. All right, we're, we're done. Run, one. Let's make some money um, into financial year. I hope it was good for you as it was for me. Yeah. Um, yep. Don't do too much. I'll tell you what, it's now 11.03 on Friday the 30th of the 6th. If you're trying to do something in the market now, I, I ASIC need to come and investigate you. It's the end of the financial year. <laughs> Step away from the keyboard. Go and take a client out for lunch. It's You're done. It's over, okay? Go play some golf. Go play some golf. Do something that's sensible. Make sure that everyone is good. Draw a line under it. Start again next uh, next week. First, well, you know, when, 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 the, when the month starts, okay? Well done, everyone. Congratulations. Thank you very much to Australian Mutual Funds Exchange. Don't forget to get your tickets to the Bell Tree for their breast cancer charity night on in October. Um, check them out, B-E-L-T-R-E-E, uh, and they'll be able to help you out on that one. Okay, thanks very much, Heath. Have yourself a good weekend. Uh, thank you. You too and everyone else out there. Have a great weekend too.